Hi there, I'm Chris Berman. Here we go on ESPN. We'll be getting out to the polls Tuesday, but our votes for great football today in week 10 of the NFL on ESPN. We've got two teams each hoping for a landslide victory here in this one. New York Giants, Arizona Cardinals. Now! While the teams are out on the field getting loose, the fans are filing in and finding their seats for the game. Hello, I'm Dan Stevens, and welcome to Arizona Stadium. Here with me in the booth, my longtime associate, Peter O'Keefe. Peter, this game has got a playoff atmosphere with a chance at the number one spot in the division at stake. Well, the pressure's on, Dan, and you better believe it. Can secure number one in their division with a win, and with these kind of matchups, it all comes down to rhythm. Whatever team can establish an offensive and defensive rhythm earliest will come away with the win. And now let's go down to the coin toss. They're set. Rackers boots the opening kickoff. Taylor downs this in the end zone for a touchback. Carter goes right up the middle and rambles for about five. Warner throws a bullet to the flat and it's complete at the 24. Drag down at the 20. Barber chews up four yards and that will bring up. Warner gets all of his arm into this pass and they get the first on third and long. Wilson sacks him way back at the 40 shotgun. Jackson tips it away on the coverage. Incomplete. Fourth. Holden hauls in the pass, and he's got the first down and a whole lot more. Chip dodges this one way out right and rambles for about five. McCown just rifles this one, and the reception's made at the 36. Eventually tackled at the 19. First down. And Quan Bold. Peterson tips it away on the coverage. Incomplete. That will bring Dean for that situation. And it will bring up fourth down. Rackers kicks from 38 yards out, and they take the lead. Kurt Warner. Barber takes it for his fifth carry and gains about three yards. Raynock Thompson. Rips him down in the backfield and that takes them even farther away from the marker. It'll be fourth down. McCown throws a bullet and it's tipped. Incomplete. That will bring up four receivers line up as the defense settles into a nickel package. Warner unloads this one to the left and it's caught at the 33. Five. He's in for the touchdown. I kill you. He's going to make a great play right here. Snags the football and then really turns on the juice. He'll get the touchdown and he does it in style. Beautiful play. Now the extra point and somehow he misses it. Good run back off that kick. Send you to Chris Berman in our studios in Bristol for the ESPN halftime report. Boomer. All right, Dan, interesting game at the half. We'll get back to you guys in a bit. First, we welcome everybody to our ESPN Halftime Report. I'm Chris Berman. Now we'll look at our halftime comparison. And as you can see, total yards definitely tell the story thus far. The Giants should be way ahead on the scoreboard, but somehow they've let their opponent hang with them. Let's see if they can change things in the second half. We'll pick up the action midway through the first quarter. Kurt Warner would drop back and deliver a strike on this one. 
Cardinals. Later on in the second quarter, the Cardinals in control at the midfield stripe. Anquan Bolden found a soft spot on the defense and it worked to his advantage. That set up a 39-yard field goal. The Giants answering right back. Giants losing by three. Ike Hilliard came up with a big play as he was able to pull this one in. They take the lead for the first time and are now up by three. The Giants have it again. Kurt Warner would find his target on this one. And that's where we'll leave this one. Cards are down, but still in it. Six to three. Today's halftime hero has turned in an incredible performance thus far. Ike Hilliard has played like a man possessed. So that does it. Holden catches the bullet out left, and they get the first on third and long. Three wideouts in the game. McCown throws this on a rope, and it's complete for the first down and a whole lot more. Josh. Chip picks up six on the play, and that will bring up second down. Peterson makes a play on this and forces the incompletion. Fourth down. Warner zings it to the right side, and the reception is made past the mark. No good. Incomplete. Jeremy Shockey had that one. Hilliard grabs the rope right side, and that's not enough. He's short of the marker. One which starts at the 37-yard line. Holden makes the catch out to the left, and is well past the markers for a first down. To like his performance so far. Well, Dan, I like any receiver who's willing to go over the middle and sacrifice the body to make the catch. McCown uncorks this to the left sideline, and the ball is caught at the 28. And he's in for the touchdown. Juan Bolden is going to make the catch right there, but that's only the beginning. Look at him chew up the yardage. That's his first touchdown of the... Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. No. They couldn't connect on this one. Incomplete. Jeremy Warner throws a bullet here, and it's complete for a first down and a whole lot more. Long as well. He loves to see the ball coming his way. Chucky snags the dart right sideline, and he's got the first down and a whole lot more. Warner throws a heater right sideline, and the completion is good for six. Jockey didn't haul that one in, and it falls incomplete. Warner rifles it out left side, and it's complete at the 21, and he stopped right there. Warner lobs this one deep to the end zone, and it falls incomplete. They will turn the ball over on down. Chip gets the call again, and gets past the line. No one in front of him. The 45, 35, 25, tackled, and the clock will continue to run. It will be first 10 to 6. For my partner, Peter O'Keefe, this is Dan Stevens saying goodbye until next time. Okay, Dan, thank you very much. And let's welcome all of you back to the studio. I'm Chris Berman here to bring you our ESPN video games post-game wrap-up. The Cardinals stepped it up for sure, putting up some good numbers. Let's get started in this one early in the third quarter. Josh McCown connected with his man on this one. This time at the 47, Anquan Bolden was definitely a key as he was able to work his way open for a big one here. A 46-yard touchdown for the Cardinals. 
Giants down by four. Kurt Warner would drop back and deliver a strike on this one. The Cards have it after a turnover on downs. Marcel Ship is going to take this one right up the gut. Look at the burst as he busts into the secondary. There he goes. And that's where we'll leave this one. Cards squeaked out a win, 10 to 6. Now let's check in with our player of the game, a guy who made one big time catch after another to help seal the win for his team. Anquan Bolden is on the field with our Susie Calder. Suze? Thank you, Chris. You really came up big, and you edged them out in a hard-fought game. What do you think was vital to your team's success today? Today's win was huge. The coaches, man, it's all about the coaches. If it wasn't for our coaching staff out here, we wouldn't have got it done. So I give a lot of credit to the coaches. They were a big edge in winning this game today. Back to you, Chris. Well, that just about... Hi there, I'm Chris Berman. We got a lot of games to cover, so let's get to it. In our first game this week, we had the Titans bash their way to a 23-point victory. We had a big injury in this one, and Trey has the lowdown for us. Trey? All right, Chris, thanks. In front of you, we've got the AFC Infirmary Report. And as you can see, they were hit hard this week. Lance Schulters will be on the sidelines for a while, so this defense will need to do some reshuffling in his absence. A hairline fracture of the arm is the initial report, and the doctors are saying he'll be out for the rest of the regular season. There's a chance, however, they'll get him back for the playoffs. In front of you, we've got the NFC list, and as you can see, they could form their own mash unit. Nick Barnett is probably the one that most leaps out at you. It's a broken arm, and the doctors are saying he'll be out for the rest of the regular season. There's a chance, however, they'll get him back for the playoffs. Now the big story of the day. Lance Schulters is going to be watching from the sidelines for a while as his injury will deal a major blow to this team. So that'll do it for now. Chris, let's send it back to you. In a long-standing AFC rivalry, we had the Steelers win their fourth game of the year. The Lions lost this one, but will stay at number one in the NFC North. Tony Parrish played well despite the loss and showed us why he's ranked up at the top of the league. Giants, Cardinals. Showed us Ike Hillier came up with a huge play here as they cover a lot of real estate on this one. The Cardinals go on to win this by the final score of 10 to 6. Bobby Ingram had over 50 yards receiving and helped his Seahawks beat the Rams. On the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field in Green Bay, we had the Packers get nipped by three points. Over at the RCA Dome, we had the Colts edge their way to a narrow three-point win. Eagles, Cowboys. A three Julius Jones would certainly like to help his team get into the end zone. And he's a set seven yards behind the line of scrimmage now. Looks to bounce outside. Does so. Gets a block. Touchdown. Ten yards. The Cowboys win this one by the final score of 14 to 13. The Chiefs defense held their opponents to under 100 rushing yards in their win at New Orleans. The Bengals lost on the road, but will get to head home and meet the Steelers. In a long-standing AFC rivalry, we had the Patriots pick up win number seven. Buccaneers, Falcons. Pick up win number Brad Johnson. Mark signals at the 24-yard line. Do they go to the end zone here? Takes a little extra time at the snap. Good pocket, slings it. And a perfect timing pattern for a touchdown. The Buccaneers win this one by the final score of 27 to 21. And last but not least, we had the Ravens come away victorious. So that'll just about do it. But before we go, I'm going to toss out a few game balls to my prime time players. Each and every one of these men had a week to remember. That'll do it, sports fans. I'm Chris Berman, and thanks so much for joining us here in the Bristol studios. We'll see you next week right here on ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.